Okay, the third example from turning polar coordinates into rectangular it looked like this. It was 4, 11 pi over 6. I'm going to go through, and this time I'll, I'll do it using similar triangles. I like that method. I like both methods, but uh, this one makes sense to me. Um, all the way around the circle would be 12 pi over 6 because a full circle is 2 pi. So 11 pi over 6 is we just back up 1. So that's pointing in this direction. This is the point we're talking about. We know this is 4, and I'm looking for x and y. If I can find x and y, that's the rectangular version. Now I'm going to draw the mini-me version. The mini-me version for this, okay, if it's pi over 6, that's 30 degrees. So this reference angle right here in the inside here is a 30-degree angle. Across from the 30 is a 1, 2, square root of 3 is how we fill out the rest of our triangle. Remembering that if I go down, that's a negative. Okay, so we have our two similar triangles now. They both have 30-degree angles. They both have right angles. And now I can say, well, x is to the square root of 3 as 4 is to 2. Okay, x is to the square root of 3 as 4 is to 2. Set my, purport, my proportion. Um, then we just have to cross multiply. 4 divided by 2 is 2, and we're going to end up getting x equals 2 square root of 3. Check. Now with y, same kind of thing. y is to negative 1 as 4 is to 2. Well, that's easy enough. y is to negative 1 as 4 is to 2. y is negative 2. Okay, so we have our points, our rectangular points. 2 root 3 and negative 2. Um, I actually did it using trig. And I got, hey, the same answer. That's a good feeling. Okay, it's nice when it works out like that. Okay, so now we're, we're moving on the other way. We got one last thing to do now. What if I gave you the points already or in rectangular form and asked you to write them in polar form? That's what we need. So we need those other two little formulas that we went over, those relations that kind of relate the two. One of them came from the Pythagorean theorem. One of them came from Sokotoa. But this will relate if we have x and y. I can just jam them in here and figure out what r is. And if I have x and y, I can figure out what theta is. Okay, so let's look at this first one, 4 and 3. I went ahead and drew a picture. Uh, over 4, up 3 should look something like that. Okay, over 4, up 3, 3, 4, 5. It's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Nice, there's our r. If I want to find theta, the tangent of theta is 3 fourths. And then inverse of that, I'll arc tangent, inverse tangent 3 fourths, and get 0.644. If you get something like that, Hopefully you're scratching your head a little bit, or you know well, that's in radians, so that's not too bad. If we converted that, if we were in degree mode, it's really close to 37 degrees. So we put those two things together, 4, 3, and rectangular is 5, 0.644 in polar. Or if you want to do degrees, you can do that as well. Not too bad. Okay, last one. We want to talk negative root 2, comma, negative 4. So I went ahead and drew a picture of that. It should look something like this. Move my mouse. Uh, we need to remember here that theta we're looking for starts from pointing at zero, the positive x-axis, and goes counterclockwise. So that's the theta we want. R is still R. That's not a big deal. Pythagorean theorem, we'll knock that out here in a second. But this angle we want is going to be this big angle all the way around. So there's that picture. We'll start with the easy part. The easy part was the Pythagorean theorem. Square them, add them, square root it, and we get 3 root 2. That's our R. That's how long this line is, how far away from the pole we're walking. Okay, but now we run into something here. I, I, if you're just jamming things in formulas blindly, not really understand where they're coming from, you would get this one wrong. Okay, um, as is, it says tangent of theta is y over x. Okay, well, the y coordinate's negative 4, the x coordinate's negative root 2. If you just jam that in your calculator, you're going to get 70 degrees. But what, we can look at this thing and say, this is not 70 degrees. This, this is more than 70 degrees. We have to go back to our arc tangent and inverse tangent stuff. When you take an inverse tangent, your calculator has already agreed um, that it's only going to kick out things between negative 90 and 90. Negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, that's our, our domain restrictions to have an inverse. So we have to know what's going on here. We have to understand what quadrant we're in to decide what this angle theta needs to be. And a lot of you have already think in your head, well, I'm just going to add 180 to it. And you'd be right. But I'm going to go through formally. What we are going to do, how I personally would solve these, is we, we talked about that reference angle earlier. I would just solve for this reference angle. If I can find the reference angle, then I can just add 180 to it to find uh, our real direction angle. So I drew a picture again. This is what my picture looks like this time. Hopefully the, ooh, that's terrible, but I'll go through it. Uh, I'm talking about phi this time. Phi is just this little angle inside here. That's my reference angle, and I'm, I'm going to ignore the signs. I realize if I go to the left, it's negative. If I go down, it's negative. That's okay, but I'm just looking at this right triangle in general. 
This is supposed to be the square root of 2, and this is supposed to be 4. So by solving this little equation in here, and I'm ignoring the sign, I'm going to find this angle phi, this reference angle in here, and then just remind myself that I need to add 180 to it. So being aware of what quadrant you're in uh, is helpful on these. So yeah, there, there's my inverse tangent. There's that 71 degrees. I think I said 70, but it's about 71 degrees if I'm rounding correctly. We add 180 to it, and we get our answer in degrees. So our 3 root 2, comma, 251. Just got to be careful. Know what quadrant you're in and be able to adjust with your SOHCAHTOA stuff, okay? So that's it for our notes. We learned about polar coordinates today. It's a different way to graph uh, points, a different way to get to places. Um, I completely remember in calculus when they first showed us where pi r squared came from and where eventually where four-thirds pi r cubed comes from for circles. And they showed us using polar coordinates and they showed us using rectangular coordinates. And polar coordinates were so much easier. It's just things dealing with circles, and it makes sense, lend themselves well to polar coordinates. So um, just, just some activities. Here are your stamp, if you want to think of it that way. Suggested problems, page 852, 5 through 29. Make sure you guys can do those. There is a worksheet that I posted I want you to do and share with me back once you get the answers or email. Um, I have you doing a flip good this week. I know a lot of you dislike the flip grid but I, I, it's good for me being able to hear your voice and hear you explain this stuff um i can get a better sense of what you understand and what you don't understand so you're doing a flip grid this week but um, come see me during office hours we, we can talk about whatever notes whatever help you need um that's it for this video see you guys